first Sunday is Youth Sunday at Grace Communion Richardson. Welcome to all of you. Uh, my name is Gabriel. I am lead pastor of Grace Communion Richardson. And it is my special privilege to welcome you to our youth-oriented uh, worship service today. At Grace Communion Richardson, we seek to know Jesus, His love, and to make Him known. And we do so through worship, through family fellowship, and through community and neighborhood engagement. I want to welcome your comments. Please feel free to share your comments with us. Uh, all those of you who are watching would like to, to know where you are watching from. So let us know where you are watching from and who you are watching with uh, if you are watching with, uh, with others. And if you have any prayer requests, please feel free to send us your prayer request. And you can do so using the email address that's on your screen at the bottom right corner uh, of your screen. And I promise we will follow up with any uh, prayer requests that uh, you send to us. I want to also invite you to join us on a Zoom discussion after this stream. Uh, if you have any questions, if there are some things that you want to um, clarify, and uh, feel free to join us to do so. And for us to fellowship as well. And this will happen right after this stream and go on till about 4.30. And those of you who have Zoom and are familiar with how to use Zoom, you can see the Zoom link uh, on the screen as well as if you want to phone in for whatever reason, the phone number to do so is also uh, on the screen. Uh, those of you watching on Facebook, there is a link in the des description uh, section of Facebook uh, for this stream that you can click on uh, to get uh, onto the Zoom. And for those of you who are watching from our website, uh, you can also click on the link that is above the video uh, that you are watching, and that will also take you to, uh, to the Zoom. And I hope that uh, you are able to join us uh, for discussion and for fellowship uh, as we continue to grow together. Uh, in the grace and knowledge of our Savior and continue to grow together in seeking to know Him and to make Him known. As we reopen for business and for in-person gatherings uh, here in the great state of Texas, uh, I, I pray that we are going to continue uh, to be mindful uh, that we take the necessary precautions for ourselves, for our families, and for especially the vulnerable uh, around us so that we take care of each other even as we go back to the kinds of things that we've been waiting to go back to uh, since this virus struck. I also hope and I pray that we will make decisions uh, not based on fear, uh, but rather based on love. Uh, as we reopen here in, in Texas, and that we will take care of ourselves. And I know by God's grace that we're going to come out of this uh, unbowed and even stronger, and hopefully more caring, more loving in our relationships, uh, more aware of the love of God for us uh, as we draw closer to Him and as we draw closer to each other. Right now, I would like for us to join our youth worship team uh, as they give us the, the first praise song. And then after them, we are going to have uh, a prayers uh, by my lovely wife, Christine, and then uh, also by Mason. And then we'll have the scripture reading by Naya, and then we'll come back uh, with a word of thanks for your generosity and financial support and we'll get into the main message uh, for today so please uh, do stay with us
Father God, we come to you because we trust you. You created us and you know us, and nothing that's happening is a surprise to you. We lift up to you our feather, federal, state, and local authorities, Lord. We ask you to give them wisdom as they're making decisions. We lift up to you our health care workers. We ask for protection, for encouragement. We lift up to you those who are sick. Father, we ask for healing. We lift up to you those who have lost jobs, who are, whose businesses are struggling. Provide, Lord. Sustain, Lord. We lift up to you parents and teachers who are working hard to educate and care for children. Lord, these and all concerns that we have are important to you. Thank you, Lord, that you care about the things that are happening and that you're working in ways that we don't even see. Thank you, Lord, for all of the things that you're doing and all of the ways that you're responding to the concerns that are on our hearts. Thank you for being present. We pray all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And now we have one of our Sunday School students, Mason, who would like to share a few of his prayers. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray for my grandpa, my Mimi, my brothers, my sister, everyone in my family. I pray for the church. I'm thankful for everything that's came up to me today and every day, except things that are sad. But, And I pray for my friend that it's gotten better after he got robbed. And I just want to pray for all those people in Jesus' name. Amen. John chapter 10, verses 1 through 10. Very truly I tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens up the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all of his own, he, ha he goes on ahead of them, and his voice follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, I very truly tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have, have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy, and I have come that they have made full life and have it to the full. Thank you to our very talented uh, youth praise team uh, for the praise song, and also to my lovely wife, Christine, and to Mason for their prayers, to Naya for the scripture reading. And at this point, I also want to say thank you to all of you, Grace Communion Richardson members and supporters, and those who share our values uh, for your generous financial and prayer support uh, all along throughout uh, this um, a difficult time and uh, I just want to express a sincere thanks for your generosity and for choosing to live a life of generosity as you support uh, the gospel work of the church all right now we're going to get back to the main message and for those who like titles the message is the good shepherd's voice that's the title the good shepherd's voice throughout each day there are so many voices speaking to you and seeking to influence your thoughts your worldview your moods and your actions and these influences relates to almost every aspect of life 
uh, from sex to money to fashion to just feeling a sense of acceptance of your own self to life itself. These voices include your peers, especially for our young people. And, you know, when we talk about peers, it's not only the young uh, who are susceptible to the influence of peers. Adults are too. But peers have voices that they use to influence. We get influenced by the news, the entertainment. That's a big one family, friends, and even the self-talk that we give ourselves. These are uh, some of the ways that these voices come from the platforms or the various voices that assault us each waking moment. And it is especially true for our young people. Uh, they are bombarded with all these voices each day. So the question is, who do you listen to? Who do you listen to? Who do you turn to for clarity? Or at least for assurance, even when things are still not certain, even when things are not clear, when they are confusing. Who do you turn to for assurance, if not for clarity? Do you have a singular voice that you listen to consistently as the ultimate source or frame of reference for you. Well, I want to propose that Jesus is the Good Shepherd whose voice is the ultimate and singular source of consistent and persistent voice of harmony, of wholeness, of comfort, of guidance, of wisdom, of love, that rings true as the ultimate voice that we can rely on, that you can rely on for harmony and as the frame of reference for your life. And this is important because even though we have all these voices that are bombarding us with the ideas, uh, not all of them are good for us. In fact, a lot of them are outright harmful to us. And we have to have a way of having a voice that is consistently good for us, that is consistently for our good, for our welfare, for our growth, for our well-being. And I want to propose to you, my friends, that, that that voice is the voice of the Good Shepherd, Jesus Christ. See, the Bible talks about sounds quite a bit, especially the, vo the, the sound of voices as well as of musical instruments like the trumpet. And the Bible uses these sounds more often than not as metaphors for knowing or recognition, as metaphors for certainty and for consistency. And so we, the Bible talks about having, you know, a trumpet that is a trumpet sound that is certain. Um, that, you know, at the last trumpet, we will be raised, those who are in the resurrection, and so on. Um, we need that certainty in our minds, in our hearts, in our listening. And the only true certainty, even though not loud, even though not violent, <laughs> is the said certain voice of Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd. Let's read about that in John chapter 10. Uh, now I read John chapter 10 and verses 1 to 10 to us. She did a great job with that. In John chapter 10, 
uh, it's a break in the story here because when the scriptures were originally written they didn't have the chapters and verses the way that we have them now and so chapter 10 is a it's a follow-on of chapter 9 and chapter 9 we talked about this in a previous sermon message about the man born blind who was invisible to most around them at that Sunday sermon we talked about the visible invisibles and we talked about the those who are invisible uh, even to themselves in terms of their own self-perception self and so on. This man was born blind and he was not considered valuable by the Pharisees. Even when Jesus healed his blindness, they were not happy for the man. They were only concerned about whether a rule concerning how the day is to be observed has been broken. They were not happy that the man has regained his sight and is going to be able to uh, be even more productive and joyful, hopefully, in his life. And so it is within this context that we continue reading from chapter 10 and in verse 1. It says, very truly, Jesus speaking to the Pharisees now, and of course, the whole subject of the blindness of the man from birth and his healing, Jesus used as a metaphor to teach the important truth that you can be blind. You can be blind and you need Jesus to open your eyes. And if you refuse to acknowledge that you need eye-opening, then you remain in your blindness. And so Jesus was talking to the Pharisees, and in verse 10, uh, chapter 10, verse 1, he says, Truly, Very truly, I tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. Now, Jesus is using a very familiar um, um, life, uh, uh, life um, way of life, let me put it that way, to make a point to the Pharisees. Uh, raising sheep and, and being a shepherd was, was a normal routine way of life in that region of the world. And so using this analogy was familiar to the Pharisees and the people surrounding them, all the people who were hearing Jesus talking with these uh, Pharisees. Uh, in our day and age, you know, a lot of people are not very familiar with shepherds and shepherding. In fact, maybe some of you here in this sermon have not even seen a live sheep before. Maybe you've seen a sheep, you know, in pictures and maybe in a video or a movie or something, but you've not actually seen one before. In those days, it, it was common practice for sheep to be herded and taken care of. And they were used for not only meat, but for uh, for the wool and everything else that uh, they were able to use the sheep for. So the sheep was, in that sense, quite valuable. And so Jesus is using a an everyday activity uh, known to the Pharisees and the and the and the and the and the crowd to teach a point, he says that the Pharisees, he was implying, because they were not happy for the blind man, in metaphorical uh, uh, sense, a sheep. They didn't care for the sheep, the blind man. They were more concerned with their rules. And so Jesus is saying, truly, I tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen. That's the place where the sheep is, is, uh, is kept overnight. By the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. And that is, you know, self-evident. Usually we go through the door. And when you come through the door, it's less likely that you have harmful intent. Even though there are exceptions to that. <laughs> we all know that. But it is generally accepted that if you are going into somebody's house through the window, it is, it is generally accepted that that is not evidence of uh, good intentions. Uh, it will be construed as evidence of harmful intent. If you don't go through the door, you're going through the window instead. And that's what Jesus is saying. The verse 3, uh, uh, verse 2, The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. 
the gatekeeper opens the gate for the shepherd and the sheep listens to the shepherd's voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. So to enter by the gate is to not have any ulterior or selfish harmful motive. A lot of voices have bad agendas and we have to be careful about the voices that we allow to speak into our lives. The Good Shepherd is not one with a bad agenda. The Good Shepherd is known not only for how he takes care of his sheep. So not all shepherds are good, by the way. We're talking about a Good Shepherd here. And he says the Good Shepherd is known not only for how he takes good care of the sheep, but also for his familiar voice known to the sheep. He talks to his sheep. He communicates and shares words of life with his sheep. The Good Shepherd is the kind, gentle voice that speaks wholeness and life into your situation. And that is the voice of Jesus. Let's jump down. Uh, in the chapter, in chapter 10. Let's go to verse 9. In verse 9, Jesus continues saying, I am the gate. Let's pause, this, pause there for a minute. He's saying he is the gate. Again, it's a metaphor referring to himself as the gate. Now, a gate or a door or a way provides us with a sense of direction. It helps us know where we're going. Right. It is a way of giving us access that is unimpeded in that sense. You know, the gate is open, you go through it. They provide a sense of direction. So Jesus provides that sense of direction, provides guidance, provides uh, counsel through his spirit and he does so in relationship and so in verse 9 in, in the 10th chapter of John he says I am the gate whoever enters through me will be saved I provide security I provide safety gates do that right they will come in and go out and find pasture. Not only do I provide safety and security, I do not imprison either. My gate is such that it does not imprison you. You have choices to make. However, you will also find nourishment and sustenance within my gates. I provide pasture, provide food, I provide nourishment, right? So Jesus is saying here that he is non-coercive. He is persuasive, his voice is, but his voice is not coercive. His voice is compelling but it is not coercive. It is not dictatorial. It is not by force. Verse 10, he contrasts that with what a thief does. This is the thief, verse 10, comes only to steal and kill and destroy. Very harmful. Very violent. Very coercive. Very tyrannical. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. So the voice of the Good Shepherd is not meant to be uh, dull and, and restrictive and, and legalistic. It is meant to free us 
that we may use our talents and our skills and our gifts in a way that brings joy not only to us but to others and brings honor and glory to God. It is that voice from the Good Shepherd that we want in our lives, especially as young people. In a world that is very confusing sometimes, very uncertain and very risky. Jesus provides us a voice that is not tyrannical, provides us a voice that is not coercive. It is inclusive, it is inviting, it is welcoming, and it is affirming. It is accountable, don't get me wrong, wrong but it's not, it's not accountable in the judgmental way that we are more often than not familiar with. It's accountable in the sense of saying, look, this is right, this is wrong. This is the best way to have meaning and fulfillment in your life. This is empty. This is a dead end. That's the voice of harmony. That's the voice of wholeness. That's the voice of love, of comfort, of encouragement, of support. It's the voice of life. And in verse 11, now I did not read this part, but in verse 11, Jesus goes on to say who he is as a shepherd. A good one. He says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. That's what Jesus did. And that's what we remembered during Easter. He laid down his life for all of us. He's the one who leaves the 99 and goes after the one. And he's the one who leaves the one and goes after the 99. He is the good shepherd. And the definition of a good shepherd is given to us by the psalmist in Psalm 23. It's a very popular psalm for a lot of people, especially people who are in, 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 in hospitals or going through very difficult times. It's called, the Lord is my shepherd. You've probably heard it before. I shall not want he makes me lie down in green pastures, and he goes on. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. You know, that's like from the sheep's perspective, saying this about the shepherd. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Yes, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's the sheep, metaphorically saying that about the shepherd. That's the good shepherd. His voice is known, and his voice is familiar, and his comfort is harmony. His guidance, his direction, his nurturing, his sustaining, his protective. In John chapter 1 verse 14, I'm, I'm not going to turn to read, read that, but you can read that on your own. Just as you can read Psalm 23, that talks about the good shepherd. But in John chapter 1 verse 14, we are told that the word became flesh, incarnated, and dwelled amongst us. And then we've seen his glory as the only begotten Son of God, full of grace and truth. So the word, the voice of the Good Shepherd is full of grace and truth. And we get to know this in relationship with Jesus. You get to know the Good Shepherd's voice in relationship with him through his written word, through the Bible, through the scriptures that points to the living word. As the Spirit enables and opens minds and hearts to do so. The written word points us to the incarnate, the word made flesh, the living word, Jesus. The Good Shepherd's voice is authentic, it is consistent, it is unselfish, it looks out for you, and it brings harmony and wholeness and meaning 
to your life. The Good Shepherd is what Psalm 23 is about. And Jesus is the Good Shepherd. He speaks grace and truth and love into your life. Are you willing to listen? Are you willing to hear it? Are you willing to allow that voice to guide you in this life that is often so turbulent, so confusing, so uncertain? So that even when you do not have clarity, through the voice of the Good Shepherd, you may have assurance. You can rest in safety in Him as the one who is the gate as well. That you can rely on Him. That you can put your burdens on that Good Shepherd. That you can let go of your load on His shoulders. You know, young people, you can talk to Jesus anytime, anywhere, about anything and everything. And as you do so, I encourage you to just listen. To listen to Him, what He says back to you. Listen to Him through His Word, the Scriptures. You don't worry about where you read, just read it. And ask Him to open your eyes and your mind and your heart to hear what He is saying. And have Him as your singular ultimate source or voice for your life above all the other voices out there that are coming at you and you will never be led astray you will always come out the winner even when you seem like you are failing even when it seems like it is lost even when it seems hopeless. When you are one with the Lord and you are listening to the voice of the Good Shepherd, there is no other outcome, ultimately, but victory. Amen? Well, I hope that you will join us on a Zoom discussion after this stream. And that discussion is going to go on until about 4.30 or so. Uh, if you have any questions or any clarifications, uh, feel free to join us for discussion and for fellowship. And I look forward to seeing you again. The, uh, the um, Zoom ID and the link, as I said earlier, are available uh, in the Facebook description section, as well as for those of you watching uh, from the website, Grace Communion Richardson website. It's on top of the video. And you can click on it. Look forward to see you uh, after this stream. Now we're going to have a concluding praise song from our fabulous uh, youth praise team. And then hopefully we will see you on Zoom and we will get to know each other even better. Uh, God bless you. See you next Sunday. Your love is greater, your love is strong
awakens. Hello.